on part two type of deal. That's like, also to watch it that way. That's also him kind of playing along with the uh, continuity of of Dunkirk, the way that Dunkirk is kind yeah. of stylized. He's doing an interstellar just in a, a little more, <clears throat> you can make more sense of it. Like Dunkirk, people don't like it because you really have, it's a fucking complex film. You yeah, know what I mean? Smart. No dummies. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> it's, <laughs> for sure. It's, it's pretty wild. You hate that movie? Oh yeah, you're dumb. <laughs> <laughs> you just don't understand it. <laughs> Did you ever see J. Edgar? No, with Leo, no. I okay. Know. Shitty movie. <laughs> it is? It's bad? It, it's So many things about it is bad that it makes it bad. It's not like a bad movie altogether. Mm-hmm. I love Clint Eastwood. I feel like I you just Leo. don't like Leo, and that's why you're hating on the I Revenant, like huh? <laughs> oh, yeah, you like how I brought that I back like around, boy? I didn't forget. I, I didn't forget. No one's perfect. <laughs> so everyone's making a mistake, and that was his. Uh, <laughs> I love R.V. Hammer. The makeup in it is super bad, but they go through flashbacks. <laughs> and unless you know your history, you're not going to know what time of year that they're doing this flashback in. Okay. Like, so you have to know your presidents. You have to know, like, what the fuck's going on now? Oh. Like, do jump quite a bit. So, so what you're saying is the movie suffers because they don't, they um, take for granted, like, the amount of knowledge that the viewers have. Is that what you're saying? Kind of? Yeah, pretty much. Yeah. Well, they overload you with it. I, mean, I could see. Yeah, I could see that. If you're going to see a movie about J. Edgar, you pretty much know your J. Edgar history. Yeah, you got to want, want to see something like that, right? Yeah. <laughs> but... The uh, with Dunkirk, they give you three options, and you kind of figure it out. If you don't figure it out pretty soon, by the middle of the movie, you're like, "Oh, okay, I'm here." <laughs> that clicks now. <laughs> but this one, you're like, "Why are you talking to this person now?" It, it's just a good example and a bad example I'm showing right there. Gotcha. Of playing with time. So yeah, there's that. I do love the design of the spaceship. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, I thought that was great. The actor who plays the gentleman who stays on a ship when they go to the first planet. Oh, yeah. yeah. Uh, he's great in it. Uh, for his little small part. He and gets... Then, uh, uh, you he, you he, can tell how like how messed up he is when they come back and how he's like been there for so long. Yeah. He's, he's like, it's been 20 years. I thought yeah. you guys weren't like, coming oh, back. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Well, you know, after 20 years, if they weren't coming back, I would have... Uh, gone to the next planet <laughs> right <laughs> you have an AI on board he could drive you there and then I'm watching it again like I just just fucking with Anne Hathaway the whole time mm-hmm. gone straight to her boyfriend's rock yep, exactly. would be good nope but yeah, make make it wanted to be this smart ass and be like and oh you love that guy so yeah instead of making the movie two hours 45 minutes it could have been one hour 45 minutes <laughs> yeah <laughs> <laughs> Uh, no, it's. I really enjoyed it. I like at the end when he, uh, when you know, they find him in space, and then they wake him up, and he goes and uh, finds Tars, and his yeah. batteries, you know, been blown out. So he replaces it, and he's, he shows him working on it, and then they're like, uh, he's going through like the procedures of like basically rebooting him. Yeah. And then he's like, uh, self destruct in 10, 9, 8. <laughs> like, 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 humor take it down, down to 60, 60, percent, please. He's like, knock, knock. Do you want to go to 50? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, man. I feel like, like, Tars and Case, I mean, just Tars mainly is, is, is like the unsung hero in this, in this movie that kind of, uh, yeah. it's kind of, he's like the only positive in this, like, like this catastrophic event that's happening on Earth. Yeah. He saves. He saves Brand. Yeah, right. Yeah. I like it when he's um, interrogating Matthew McConaughey. <laughs> yeah. He leans forward on the desk. Thought that was great. I, I think the movies. Not much you could argue with that movie, except the explosion in space. There would be no fire. But <laughs> oh, when when uh, Matt Damon fucking yeah. blows up the the yeah. thing. Yeah, <clears throat> there'd be no fire, but you know it would blow up like that. <sighs> That spinning scene, though, that's awesome. So he's trying yeah, to catch up so the doc. Cool. Since they had that physicist, like overseeing everything, and I know he put like um, kind of restrictions on Nolan, where he was like, "No, everything has to actually be plausible in reality." Yeah. So how would that be? How would the fire have gotten by him? Or 
because a studio pays way more money than this <laughs> does. Yeah, yeah. Basically, they're like, oh, we want fire. It's because the 30 people in the test audience go, that was kind of boring when the spaceship just like, <laughs> just implodes. They want to see the explosion. Hmm. I mean, Hollywood. I don't care. I'm just saying, like, people are like, oh, that's one of the things they'll go after. It doesn't bother me. I love the fucking movie. Well, because mm-hmm. um, from what I know, I think that that physicist. His, whose name escapes me right now and one of the producers of this film actually came up with the treatment for this whole movie hmm. which was like it was based on their theories or whatever and then they I bet you that had more to do with the black hole time than yeah definitely, the other stuff definitely but uh, who there was an astronaut or someone just recently said that Interstellar has the closest idea to what a black hole would be like yeah, not black hole, or like that's the closest thing. And what it what lo- what it looks like on film, yeah. like true then, to life or whatever. Yeah. Didn't we just see one recently too for the better picture where it is like a, a ball? Um, like NASA just from NASA, one. right? Yeah. yeah. So, hey. They got some would, pretty cool would, stuff on their on their Instagram NASA yeah. or the, their satellite the thing. I would not take it's a ship through that thing. No, no way. <laughs> no way, no. I mean, at that point, you're kind of like, oh, whatever, you know, she's gone, so might as well see mm-hmm. the only person to go through a black hole. Yeah, first of all, the daughter's not going to talk to him when he gets back, <laughs> most likely, because she's a stubborn little bitch. Yeah. <laughs> Casey Affleck, he's just a dickhead, but, you know. He's an asshole. He's a good asshole in this. Yeah. Is it because he's just, like, um, Adapted to being a farmer, and that's all he cares about. Is that what I was think, going I on? think it's because he lost his so. son. He lost his son. Remember, he had the baby. Yeah, he yeah. lost his son. Yeah, and then he, he liked being a farmer. He says it, and like it's his, it's his family farm. There's that pride to him not wanting to leave it, mm-hmm. and stuff like that. So, and plus, I'm pretty sure he doesn't want to leave it even more so because dad left. Yeah, right. I'm not going to do that. I'm not going to leave this farm. You that's... could go deep down in all these characters, probably. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It was fucked up that um, that for uh, a good majority of the film, his kids really think that he left them there, knowing that they were on like a suicide mission or what, or they were gonna not a suicide mission, but they were gonna colonize Basically, yeah, another planet the with themselves, and they left. He left his kids or whatever, which wasn't true. He had no idea, and so there's a lot of uh, layers of to pull back in here. Yeah. I really like the the uh, the poem that um, what's his name the doctor the old guy says oh, yeah. uh, rage against the dying of the light. Oh yeah, hell yeah, yeah. It's Don't amazing. go gentle in that good night. Yeah. <laughs> I'm like you're one to talk, asshole. <laughs> Not all of us. It's like yeah, exactly. He he, fi- he figured out that equation years ago, dummy. <laughs> the end, I think it says it was the size of a tangerine. <laughs> I lied to you your whole life. Yeah. That was rough. Damn, I oh, was... great. The, I remember I was tearing up when he saw his daughter yeah. and his kids all grown when he came back. Mm-hmm. For the oh. first time. I don't cry anymore. <laughs> Not on this one. Not even girl. She was a... You mean when she's an old lady? Not anymore. I think of the first time I kind of teared up. But not now. I, actually the way she like kicks him out and then like his entire seems kind of rude yeah and his entire fucking like grandkids and great grandkids don't give a fuck about him like dude they don't say hug him or nothing grandfather is the reason you're on that fucking <laughs> she, uh, she even says in the movie like I tried to tell people that you're the one who helped me nobody believes believe me. me yeah it's like well they should believe you now because a 105 year old who looks 43 just popped out uh, of came, yeah. 125 year old <laughs> 125 it's like <laughs> He came back. Like, oh, look what we found out there. This and this floating robot. It's fucking nuts. He should be praised as a superhero. Like, well, he's just and when they la- they laugh at him, like, oh no, this uh, this planet named after you. Yeah, <laughs> this station isn't named after you. It's named after your daughter. But it makes sense because they didn't choose him; they chose her. Mm-hmm. And when he finally says that, and realizes it. And she's the one who cracked the code, technically. Like, he couldn't have done it from where yeah, he was. he just gave her information. Yeah. He's just a carrier pigeon. <laughs> <laughs> He's a middleman. That's all he is. Oh, shit. No, but I loved it. Yeah? It was a good watch. Like, I, 
it like like I said, I was taking my class online. Luckily, like, I don't have to do the whole video thing just to listen to her talk. So I kind of turned that down, just looking up my TV, watching it for a big chunk of it. Just kept going back to it. <laughs> this was uh, this was after Inception, right? Yeah, because Inception is two thousand nine, and this was uh, obviously a few years. Fourteen, right? Yeah, twenty fourteen. Because twenty twelve was Dark Knight uh, Rises or whatever. Oh yeah, that's true. I could, I could see where he got some of the inspiration from Inception when uh, I think uh, Tars called it the Tesseract when it starts collapsing in on itself. Oh yeah, at the end. Well, even too, I think this whole set design too is when he's on the ice planet where you see the oh yeah like going up top. Oh, yeah, yes. it's flipped upside. It's like a mirror like, image. Yeah. Like he loves yeah. that shit. So like <laughs> it like fucks with your mind. He wants like you definitely see his style yeah. in those three films, even though they're all insane. Like, Real we, different. We're defying gravity in this bitch. <laughs> so, I love that scene in Joseph in uh, Inception with Joseph Gordon Levitt in the hallway. The hallway. Oh, oh, so good. Oh yeah, I have a little uh, mini poster of it. It's like an illustration of him fighting the dude. It's pretty rad. It's just a badass scene. I just, I love it. And I like. I'm so jealous of Joseph Gordon Levitt. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the guy's done some really uh, pretty good like had some really good roles yeah and he's set for that bicycle one i like that oh, one. i saw that one michael shannon's in it dude i love michael shannon yeah yeah he's a bad guy he gets killed by you didn't you didn't you didn't like it sam rockwell it was, it was okay it, it was okay but it was just like uh it's not like that's probably like the, the least favorite of his movies that i've seen him in huh yeah. well the new tomb raider first 15 minutes is basically that movie yeah yeah they put her on the road bike or whatever they're just like what I'm like all right kind of want to see her shoot a bow and arrow but no let's see her on a 10 speed you know the way people choose to do things astonishes me i feel like they just wanted to be like oh no she's like a city girl too and then she's like oh because it's supposed to be like the inter- like her becoming the tomb raider correct yeah, but you don't just don't become the Tomb Raider. <laughs> Have you played the games, the bro? Life. Have you yes. played the games? <laughs> yeah, she kind of just gets tossed in there, and then she just gets the shit yeah. kicked out of her, but like the whole not game. A princess, either though. You think that they portrayed her as a princess in the movie? Yeah. Oh, okay. Everything except the crown. I could see that they should have. <laughs> they should have went with the R rating, dude. In my opinion, it would have been a lot better. I bet you they would have now. Yeah, because they're now they have that uh, the confidence, right? Because yeah, everybody's doing now. It. Well, they're doing another one, from what I heard, because the first one did well. Yeah. So, I don't know. I, you know, I, I own that one. And I put it on again to watch, and it didn't keep my attention the second time as, no. as much as it did the first. What's his name? Um, Walter Coggins. Yeah. He's good. Love him. He's so good. In everything he does. My favorite is it, is role. Is the is guy from uh, Vice Principles? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Hateful Eight. Uh-huh. He's yeah. the best in Hateful Eight. And, uh, Some of the lines that he had to say in front of Samuel Jackson. So crazy. <laughs> just, uh, justified? Uh, oh, yeah, great justified. justified. Yeah. He, um, Hateful Eight, one of my favorite things is when he's aiming a gun at the guys. He's like, yeah, motherfuckers. I almost drank that. Whatever he's talking about, the coffee. <laughs> yeah, like, yeah. Oh, yeah. Right, yeah. Yeah. He's like, yeah, I'm one of those guys. You <laughs> didn't say a goddamn <laughs> word. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> His delivery is like fucking on point every time. Yeah, he was. Yeah, I loved him so much in that film. The Vice Principals, hilarious. Especially when you there was a second season, right? No, there's three. I think. Yeah, three. they finished. They finished it off. Yeah, they wrap it up. Yeah. <clears throat> no, they're good. They have that that uh, that new one that I haven't watched all the way through yet with John Goodman. It's the same people. I right? like it. Yeah, he's in it too. Yeah. Um, Isn't it called like the Family Jewels or something? Something like that. Yeah. Yeah. But you know, it, <laughs> it's funny. <laughs> That's the stuff you have to watch like three episodes to really get the humor. Mm-hmm. Unless you're just like dead eastbound down binge and then you're like, oh, no, I'm there. I'm in already. <laughs> yeah. It, that was a good one. I enjoyed it. What else? What are you doing, Slash? Just he's, he's DJing. Yeah, all right. Look at he's taking the stands. Uh, um, <laughs> the empty stage. But you should definitely um, 
If you like Interstellar and you were going to do 2001.